Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Red or Is It Spells deck with a bit of a Convoke theme thanks to the Invasion of Segovia, one of the build around cards in my deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon. A 3 mana battle with 4 defense counters and when it enters we get to make 2 1-1 one, one blue Kraken creature tokens with Trample. And then if we manage to transform it we get Catus Sea Tyrant of Segovia which is a 3-3 three, three, legendary serpent saying non-creature spells we cast have Convoke. So now we can tap our creatures to help cast those spells, even contributing towards their colored mana symbols. And at the beginning of our end step we get to untap up to four target creatures. So that ability paired with Convoke means that if we have some instants we can cast during the opponent's turn, we can potentially gain four extra mana each turn during the opponent's turn alone. And then of course during our turn we can also use Convoke to ramp out some expensive spells. So Katus with its Kraken tokens can set up some very powerful turns if we have some expensive spells to sync all that mana into and how about taking an extra turn with alchemist gambit can be cleaved for seven mana and then we can take an extra turn without any drawbacks otherwise it's three mana take an extra turn and then lose the game at the end of that next turn so you gotta make it count and then we can also potentially copy our Alchemist Gambit for 7 mana if we combine it with Chandra, Hope's Beacon, which we can also convoke thanks to Katus since it's a non-creature spell. And then we can use the plus ability to add mana or to find a spell in the top 5. And then the minus X can also deal with opposing creatures or go upstairs to close out the game. And then the passive ability is what lets us copy the first spell we cast each turn. So once again, if we can cast a spell during the opponent's turn, we can also copy it with Chandra. So having instance is important. So big score is perfect here since it ramps us into Chandra even if we don't have Convoke available and then we can also potentially cast it during the opponent's turn, make 4 treasures if we have a Chandra out to draw 4 cards so it essentially pays for itself. Then we also have 4 copies of the 3rd Path Iconoclast which is another way of generating a whole bunch of tokens which will then synergize with the transformed Katus to pay for Convoke and then we just need to cast a non-creature spell to enable it so battles also count, planeswalkers are also good to go, always to make extra 1-1 one, one soldier tokens and then we've got plenty of one mana instants as well especially good at enabling the iconoclast we can potentially wait until turn three to play iconoclast and play something like a consider to surveil one draw card and then filling the graveyard as we'll see in a second is also relevant with a leer in the deck We've got two copies of Fading Hope to bounce a creature, can also be used to save our own creatures from removal, and then four copies of Play with Fire to deal two damage to any target, can also potentially help us transform a battle. And then at two mana we've got two copies of Impulse to take a look at the top four, put one in hand, so great at finding these key cards. And then two copies of Make Disappear as the only counter spell in our deck, very synergistic with a token deck since we can also easily cast it with Casualty, and then sacrifice a creature to essentially copy it and counter a spell unless the opponent pays four in two installments of two mana each, otherwise we can also just cast it and counter unless the opponent pays two. And then the ideal sequence in this deck is playing an Invasion of Segovia and then on the following turn targeting it with our own Nahiri's Warcrafting to deal 5 damage to it, potentially exiling a land as well that we can still play or maybe a 1 mana instant that we get to play, which is also why these 1 mana instants are so valuable. And then we get to transform our Invasion into Katus. We ideally still have some tokens left and then we can also use those tokens to maybe cast some of our blue instants especially, so great with Impulse and our Cantrips. And then we can maybe still cast and make disappear during the opponent's turn after untapping some of our creatures. So the deck's definitely capable of some explosive starts thanks to the Invasion of Segovia. And then the late game of course consists of taking extra turns with Gambit, drawing a ton of extra cards, and then another key card is Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, 5 mana, 3, 4, a legendary creature saying spells cannot be countered, so with Lear on the battlefield it does shut off our own make disappear, but it's worth it because each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard has flashback, and the flashback cost is equal to that card's mana cost. So after casting a whole bunch of cheap spells early to stay alive and to interact with the opponent, we can now slam down down Lear, hopefully with a transformed Katus, and then we can use all those tokens to help us pay and replay all these spells from the graveyard to maybe make even more tokens with the Iconoclast and completely overwhelm the opponent. And then the mana base also has two copies of Swiftwater Cliffs as an extra dual land, enter stamped but gains one life, just gives us more blue red dual lands so we can cast the double red Warcrafting early while still having enough blue mana which is also important early on. 
And then we've got uh, Coast as well as Sheevan Reef as additional dual lands. The Crucible can make some 1-1s, one -ones, can also be synergistic in our deck, and Sorting City as an extra bounce effect. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and a double Leer opener is not ideal. Although Iconoclast into Warcrafting is pretty nice. I think it's still worth the awkwardness of double Leer. And Invasion's excellent, so if we can curve Iconoclast into Invasion into Warcrafting, then uh, we'll have access to a ton of mana to leverage Leer potentially. Although against the red-black I don't expect Iconoclast to survive necessarily. Opponent on Jund with a Tycoon, so a treasure deck. Yeah, don't have much else going on, so we'll play Iconoclast. Opponent could already cast a 4-drop by making a treasure first. It's going to be a Samut, so that can hit us for a 2-and-draw card. Well, hopefully they don't have a 1-mana removal spell for Iconoclast left. So opponent might have some more haste creatures to synergize with Samut. I think we still go for Invasion first, since the plan is to transform it. Get to make a token at least, which can maybe chum block if necessary. And Tycoon could make a treasure end of turn, to maybe set up a 6 drop next turn. We'll deal them some damage here. And an Arsonist is next. Yeah, that one's tailor-made for taking out our Iconoclast. We'll also draw with Samut. And don't really want to chump with two of my creatures on Arsonist, so it will unfortunately hit us and draw with Samut as well. So we're not off to a great start. Can take out the Arsonists, but probably need to transform the Invasion. Can play the Coast. Big score could be okay. Can still cast it here. I'll discard the Sheevan Reef even though we have double Leer. Still have another island in hand. Okay. So not a bad turn, all things considered, but uh, there's still an Arsonist looming. And we're out of instants to cast. Tycoon makes a treasure. So if uh, Katus survives, next turn we could have a pretty sweet turn with Lear getting back stuff from the graveyard. Otherwise we might just have to Warcrafting the Arsonist. Tycoon up to 7 mana here. And a Breach the Multiverse, okay. Opponent did not find any creatures or planeswalkers on our side, luckily, but uh, Blazing Sky... Or another Arsonist is what they found on their side. So I guess Iconoclast is still an option here. So they can kill two of our tokens. Which does make our Leer and Katus less impactful now. That we only have two creatures to convoke with. Can take out Samut at least. Take eight down to one. And untap finding Chandra, which we could cast, and then, let's see, could even use the plus mana ability to cast Warcrafting, to kill double Arsonists, maybe find something else useful that we can cast. Sure. Time to light up the 
Big score, I probably won't be able to cast. Play with fire, I can. So, can play Crucible. And then probably take out the Iconoclast here over Tycoon. Although it's a close call. For opponents, could another breach the multiverse, then Tycoon could be the scarier card. Haven't seen a whole lot of non creature spells. Okay, get to untap, so we're not dead on board at least, but another arsonist will do it. A Riveteer's Charm makes me sacrifice Chandra. If we can keep Katos alive, we're still maybe okay. Although at one life, can feel comfortable at any point. And our opponent cycles proving ground. Okay, so that's their turn. Get to untap, play a Leer, and uh, what is there to replay? Could bounce our Iconoclast to gain access to it, although I may want to keep Fading Hope available for another haste creature like Arsonist. So then we can just play with fire the Iconoclast. And make sure to convoke as much as possible here. So let us uh, play with fire. That does need to use our red mana. That's fine. Can cast a consider. I guess with double fading hope I might have been okay bouncing Iconoclast, but there's another one. Consider again. Or we could just uh, impulse actually. Tap the colorless creature as well and find a couple of options. Maybe go with a play with fire here. Since we're kind of lacking it now. End of turn and tap. Okay, so we've got all sorts of instants available. Double fading hope. Play with fire in hand now and can always replay consider. Could also counter something by bouncing our own leer. And yep, yeah, opponent's gonna make us uh, sacrifice Leer here. Yeah, go full control. And then first cast Meg Disappear with Casualty. Tapping Leer and a token. Sacking the token. And then we need to bounce our own Leer with the Fading Hope. And then we'll still have Play with Fire to answer the 1 1. And a bodyguard, that's fine. The opponent could technically attack for lethal, but we've got to play with fire. And then now we still have Leer, and we made use of a counter spell that otherwise wouldn't have done much. Okay, token down, so we're still alive. And let's see if we get to untap now with Iconoclasts and Leer. Opponent's got a Boseju, and Invasion the draw. Okay, so. If I play Iconoclast, play a Leer, we'll still have a bit of mana to work with. Could play the Invasion, trigger Iconoclast, and then with the Iconoclast we also have access to our red spells like Play With Fire. Important that we keep Fading Hope available at all times for another Arsonist. So we'll play our Invasion first. Now if there is a window where they could kill Leer while we're shields down on Fading Hope since we don't have any untamped blue creatures. But that's a risk I'm willing to take. Invasion resolves. And then consider... Make another token. Another Iconoclast seems fine. 
and we'll go end of turn to untap four creatures. Important to untap Iconoclast to get access to red mana for big score. And yeah, for next turn we can cast a Gambit. We should be able to close out the game. But our opponent still gets a whole turn to find a lethal threat. Okay. Three cards in hand, one bodyguard. A Viper's Fang seems fine. Bodyguard has Hexproof, opponent does nothing, so we'll big score. Discard another Leer at this point. No need to cast a Fading Hope on Sarath right now. I'll just keep it available on the off chance that they're sandbagging removal. But pretty sure flashing back a Gambit is gonna seal the deal. So big score resolves. And could keep going with another big score, sure. Discard Island. And a Chandra is nice too. So do keep in mind if you flash back your Gambit with Leer, you won't be able to cast it with Cleave because flashback is already an alternate cost, so you can do both. But we still get to take an extra turn, which is going to be good enough to close out the game here. So I'll just uh, show how it works. And then we can just clear a path to set up lethal this very turn. Sweet. So yeah, good to see the deck come back from the brink of death. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing red mana and we need double red for Warcrafting. So it's a bit sketchy, but can cast an Impulse, which will likely find red mana. And then we're off to the races. Put on the green-white. And a Skrelf, so it could be a poison deck. So we'd love to deploy Iconoclast, which is likely to survive. Opponent might be respecting a counter spell too here, for all we know. Alright, never mind, it's gonna be Botanical Brawler, so opponent a plus one counter deck. And grab the mountain. So I can play Iconoclast and still cast Consider, or I can keep it until after we deploy a second one. Could also just go for a big score next turn, so we'll wait and see. Need to find answers to the Brawler before it gets out of hand, but of course there's a Skrelf to protect it, so that needs to be taken out first. Bond Warden grows Brawler. And we'll take three. I guess we could have cast Consider just to see if our opponent has a response to us potentially double blocking the Brawler, but opponent may have a protection spell in place anyway. So let's consider now. Sheevan Reef gives us double red. You can always discard a land to the big score, which seems to be the case now. And then I may want a big score now. If I pick up a Chandra, I want to save the treasures. If not, it's maybe fine to deploy a second Iconoclast right away. Okay, let's play Iconoclasts. Not that there's a huge advantage to having it in play, but who knows, maybe we can pressure a battle with it. Invasion. Can make our Warcrafting cost 5. So now I'm unlikely to get much value from it. Brawler attacks. Yeah, I guess we're double blocking here. 
and hope that there's no combat trick. Okay, that worked. And time to find a Fading Hope. So I'll wait on the Warcrafting and sit on Fading Hope for now. The colorless tokens are pretty good against Skrelv since they cannot name colorless with it. Dusk Legion Duelist. That happens, so maybe now we're spawned by bouncing Skrelv since they won't be able to replay it. Although we can wait until end of turn, I suppose. And then Warcrafting can finish off the Duelist. Don't need lanes. A Leer is nice too. There's some goodies waiting for me in the graveyard. Although I may want to take out Duelist before they can draw with it. And then if we find a 1 mana spell, great. If we find a land, we can play it. Play with fire might be better now. Take out the Bond Warden. And then we'll have a play with fire to replay with Leer as well. Attack for 4. Okay, so we are starting to turn a corner here. The green-white counters deck is not known for having a lot of spot removal to kill something like Leer. Doomscore Warrior doesn't have haste, so it doesn't get to provide immediate value. So we can play Leer, Bounce Warrior, Burn Skrelv. by killing Skrelf. And yeah, Podent has seen enough. Lear is just gonna control the game from here on out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. We've got uh, tools to transform our invasion. Impulse to hit our land drop. Podent's got the Reckoner Raid, so mono black aggro, presumably. So, still happy to find a fourth land with Impulse. And Impulse also a good way to spend our mana after we transform our invasion. It's going to be the Ayara's Oathsworn, 2-2 two, two Menace, and when it deals combat damage to a player, if it has fewer than 4 counters on it, put a plus 1 counter on it, and then it can potentially search up a card once it does reach the 4 counters. So what's Impulse? Iconoclast is tempting, although it's going to be kind of tricky to set up, so maybe I'm still better off just grabbing a land. We'll make it a mountain so I don't have to take damage off Shivan Reef. And play Invasion, or we could just take out the Oathsworn right now. Close call. I think setting up Invasion is still worth it. Could technically still double block the Oathsworn, so our opponent's gonna cut down one of the tokens. Get in for two. And uh, yeah, can Warcrafting Invasion still maybe exile something useful. A Leer I wouldn't be able to cast, so we'll decline. Can Impulse with Convoke. Maybe finds a red source to cast Play with Fire. Opponent had the Go for the Throat as well. So that dies, and what do we get? Chandra is a way to stabilize, perhaps, after ramping into it with big score. Could grab Fading Hope and still cast it, bouncing the Oath Sworn. And then we can catch it on the way down with Play with Fire. Also reasonable. Sure. Does kind of rely on drawing something impactful with a big score, and we've already gotten rid of a Chandra and a Leer. So, don't have a ton of exciting draws left, necessarily. And don't think we need cliffs, do we? Because I would like to big score and then play with fire without wasting the treasure token, so an untapped land would be more useful. And a bankbuster, so they've got a bit of late game too here. Fair enough, so... Can big score discarding? Maybe a consider here. And then play with fire. At 
tank for one. And we're likely taking out the captain as well. Another Reckoner raid. Save ourselves some damage. Even though I may not have a target for Warcrafting now. Also kind of need to keep it for a potential shield roots. Trespasser is a good one. So I guess now we have a target for Warcrafting, although I'll have to discard whatever I draw next. And Leer's not bad. So if I play a Leer, I'll still have Fading Hope available. Yeah, we'll go for it. So they try and take out Leer, we'll just bounce it back to our hand in response. Bankbuster draws. And Sleeper's fine. Okay, can take that out with a play with fire. Although may as well untamp first. And a Gambit's nice if we can cast it. One mana short. So let's uh, start developing our mana some more. Didn't have anything I actively want to discard with a big score. So could start with a Consider or Impulse. Let's Consider. And a Sheevan Reef is fine. So we can play with Fire the two Sleepers. And then pass with Impulse and Fading Hope available. Although we could also big score if necessary. And Invoke Despair is their last card. Luckily have a Kraken we can sacrifice here. So that happens. Alir is safe. Opponent can animate Bankbuster. Although I could also send that packing if necessary. If I take four, I fall to three, and then I could die to another Invoke Despair. So probably best that we deal with Bankbuster. And then I take one if I also cast Impulse, maybe start there. Chandra's a good one. Yeah, let's just bounce the Bankbuster, since now that we have Chandra, even if they answer Leer, we still have something powerful to work with. Keep the invasion. And our opponent has seen enough. Can play the invasion, transform it with a Warcrafting, have access to a ton of mana, and then Chandra doubling an Alchemist Gambit is probably going to be game over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, even though we've got a few tap lands to work with. So... Maybe okay casting the Consider just to hit our land drops, even if we miss out on a potential 1-1. Opponent an Esper deck. Turn to Bank Buster. Okay, play Invasion. And Warcrafting can transform it next turn. Could also attack and play with Fire, we'll see. Okay, Kaito can make a Ninja. So could start by attacking the invasion and then see if the ninja blocks or not. If it doesn't, then can go Iconoclast, play with fire to transform, and then we can still Fading Hope the ninja, keep up make disappear, that sounds pretty good. Okay, but lets it happen. Bounce a ninja. Make another token. Don't think we need play with fire anymore. Just want to lands to cast Leer, which we cannot convoke out. Okay, and we still have a counter spell available. Kaito draws. Now this is a juicy and a duress is gonna have a look. May as well counter it here. So 
So that was a pretty effective duress, all things considered. Get to untap, find a gambit, which I can cast with uh, Cleave here. So let's go for it. Take one extra turn, take out Kaito. Although there could be an Igenjo channeled, there isn't. Wouldn't be able to use extra mana here. No instance left in hand. There's a land, however. So yeah, just gonna attack all out. Don't have anything else going on. So we are in trouble if our opponents go to Sweeper. If we find land 5 for Leer, then we've got access to a bunch of sweet instants in the graveyard. Even though Leer says spells cannot be countered, so we won't be able to make use of the Make Disappear necessarily. Unless we also combine it with Fading Hope our own Leer in response, which is a neat trick. But our opponent's got a Sunfall. Yeah, that's too bad. Can play a Leer, but opponent can likely just answer it before we get any value, but... That's all we've got going for us. And I go for the throat. Alright, so this game seems pretty over now. Don't have anything going on. Opponent's still at 7. We're not a burn deck, so it's not like we're gonna draw a lethal burn spell here to close out the game. If it weren't for the duress, we would've had a counter spell at the ready. Another invasion I can transform right away. Although I don't think that'll be good enough. And our opponent's got to negate too, so they're definitely packing lots of answers for non-creature spells. So maybe pre-sideboarded and best of one, who knows. But I think they're gonna take this one pretty easily now. Bangbuster Crude, get in for 11. Finally have a target for the Warcrafting. Can channel Crucible to stay alive, but don't think that wins us the game. Maybe can hit a land here and then still channel Crucible. Eh, opponent had another counter spell. So that should do it. And a Wandering Emperor. Okay. Well, still good to see some neat synergies early on. Just didn't quite come together all the way. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Just missing double red for Warcrafting to transform our invasion. Turn one, hopeful initiate. Okay, play tap lands. Next turn we can play with fire, even if Thalia makes it cost two mana. It's gonna be a Vanguard, which we can easily take out. And then we can still consider to find our red mana. Okay, Adlin. That one we may want to bounce with Fading Hope. Before they get to make a token. And then there's our mountain. So Warcrafting can now also answer Adlin. Get the invasion going. Okay, so we'll take two here. Nope, point is not attacking since we could have double blocked the initiate. So now Warcrafting Adeline is tempting and then wait a turn on the invasion. That might be okay. Saves us a lot of damage. And found an Iconoclast, which we sadly cannot cast here. So we'll decline. And pass it back. Third initiate. And a Siege Veteran is next. Okay. So that can start pumping their creatures. Luckily, initiate's not a soldier. 
So it wouldn't be replaced by a 1-1 one -one token if it dies. But Rapundos get to train here. Alright, hopefully we can still cast whatever we exile here. Big score should work. Discarding Soaring City. Could have also cast Consider Firsts, which is reasonable, although it's not like Soaring City can take advantage of our Convocability. Okay, a Leer is nice. May as well consider, see if we can find a cheap answer to the Siege Veteran. Iconoclast isn't bad either. And then we can still cast it here. Untap, next turn play Leer and start comboing off. Assuming they don't answer our Tyrant first. Okay. Opponent does have a borrow time, unfortunately. Goes for Iconoclast. And they can keep on training the initiates. Take six. So we can play a Leer, and then we can still use our Convoke ability to potentially cast a big score. Can consider first, maybe. Found a mountain, that's fine. So now I can get back a big score, discard Sheevan Reef. And then can still cast a play with fire to take out Siege Veteran. And end of turn on tap. And then still have Impulse, Consider, and Fading Hope up. And alright, so our opponent does not want to play anymore. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Double Gambit and our opener is not where we want to be, so we'll take Mulligan. This is better. And uh, perhaps get rid of an Impulse, keep a Leer to go with Invasion and Warcrafting. Although maybe a Leer is a bit greedy here, since we won't be able to cast it until we get to 5 mana anyway. Potent on the red aggro. So we'll need our cheap removal. Can Impulse on 2, Invasion on 3, although a Spell Spear is scary. Can maybe keep up the play with Fire now, and if they transform it, we'll take it out. If not, we'll Impulse. So opponent is playing blue as well. And Ancestral Anger. Well, if our opponent has another instance, and we play with Fire here, we kind of get punished. If not, then uh, we could kill Swiss Spear and then opponent doesn't get to draw. Let's risk it. Okay, that worked. And another impulse here. Finding double play with fire. How about we Warcrafting so we don't take any unnecessary damage? And this doesn't matter. Maybe get rid of a land that we don't need. Opponent can deal four. Hopefully no Swiss Spear here for additional prowess damage. And then we'll be able to deploy Invasion, transform it with a Warcrafting. And Chandra could be nice to work towards. Opponent likely holding more removal, but I think it's going upstairs instead of killing our 1-1s. Balmor makes sense. A reason to splash a bit of blue. So, could take out Balmor. I think we still go for the invasion. And then another invasion I can cast, thanks to Convoke. So that's perfect. Perfect. 
can still impulse. And then Fading Hope gives us immediate interaction, even though I could go for the greedy big score to maybe copy with Chandra. But uh, I think if we play Chandra, we'll already be in great shape. So no need to be too greedy. And then Fading Hope will let us cry as well. Ancestral Anger, yeah, that's another reason to hang on to the Fading Hope. And Consider is fine. I can basically cast it for free. And then double it with Chandra, and our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. So even aggro decks we can beat thanks to a quickly transformed battle. So overall this uh, blue red Convoke Spells deck is uh, definitely a deck that requires a bit of practice to get it right. And the deck has gone through several iterations, probably the deck I've worked on the most in recent memory, and I'm still not quite sure I've reached its full potential. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.